Hi folks, I'm going to be walking through a model driven power app and how we can integrate it with Outlook. Um, what I have on the screen here is essentially a demo of setting this up, some of the common issues that people come across and, and hopefully a really easy way to get things up and running. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a solution. Um, with my solution, that's where I'm going to store everything. You don't necessarily need to do this in, in your environment. Uh, but I'd highly recommend it. it makes a really nice package to move things into other environments later on. Inside of my solution, I have a table. And in this instance, I have um, business tracking, which is a table I'm going to use. But the key element here is on your table, you need to ensure that there are a couple of things enabled. The most important of which being create a new activity. What that's going to allow you to do is when we get into the table later on and we have the timeline function, without this enabled, we can only create notes with this enabled, we can go through and create appointments. There's a number of other aspects you may want to look at in here, but for this instance, we're only gonna need the create a new activity option selected. On the actual table itself, if I jump into it, we just need to assure that on the form, there's a mechanism of creating appointments. So jumping into the form, and if I quickly load up my main form, again, this is standard when you create a table. We have a control here, which is our timeline. With this timeline control, we don't need to do anything extra. It will just it will just work as, it, as expected. One thing to note on the right hand side, as standard, these options are selected. So where we have activities and notes, if you aren't seeing activities, you may need to select that tick box. If you haven't got the timeline on the form, go into components, you'll see the timeline option, which you can just drag and drop in. Make sure you save and publish this before you go live. Inside your app, so this is how the how the form looks. We can see that we have our basic fields on the left here. We have our timeline in the center. If I want to go through and create an appointment, all I have to do is click the plus icon at the top and select appointment. But I'll walk through that in a bit of detail later on. Before that actually syncs through to Outlook, we need to do a couple of other things uh, just in the background to make sure that actually our Dynamics instance or Data First instance is actually linked to your Outlook record. The first thing we need to ensure is that our system settings are configured to allow syncing between Dataverse and Outlook. If I go to my system settings, so to do that, if I go to settings, administration, and go to system settings, inside of here, I've got a whole load of information. There are two areas, one being email. And in this instance, I've configured um, appointments, contacts, and tasks to go through service side synchronization. You can do it via the Outlook um, app if, 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 if needs be. You just need to make sure that the users have that installed and working. Server-side synchronization doesn't rely on that application. The other thing to consider is under the synchronization tab, you want to make sure that appointments are enabled. Uh, and again, you may want to go through and configure things like tasks as part of the same integration. Once that's configured, we need to make sure that the mailboxes are up and running. If you go to settings, email configuration, you can go through and see the mailboxes here. By, by default, what you'll tend to find is as you go through, you'll need to go through and test and enable the mailbox. You may find that only the incoming email and outgoing email are configured. If that is the case, if you go into the mailbox, you can see below we have appointments, contacts and tasks listed here. A standard that's set to none, so you'll need to set it to server-side synchronization. And once that's configured, you can go back and retest the mailbox. And what we should see at the end of it, if I jump into my calendar, an appointment coming through. So what I aim to do next is create an appointment and have it sync through to Saturday. So if I jump onto here, I can click my plus icon. That'll open up a new activity. As I go through into the, the appointment, I need to make sure I select the right person. So in this case, it'll be myself, the subject, I'll do this demo for video and we should see that come through. And there are other things we can bring into this. We may want to go through and set a Teams meeting, um, change the duration of it. So I'm going to set this to be two hours. I'm going to set the date to be Saturday. Once that's all configured, if I just quickly update the slot, I'll go through save and close. And that'll go through add my appointment to my timeline function. But also on my calendar, what we should see momentarily 
as we can see here we've actually got it over a couple of days but we can see that the the bookings come through demo for video and that's it that's all it takes to integrate dataverse with outlook there are more things that you can do you can integrate tasks as an example so if i came into here and select tasks you can go through select a task and potentially add some other details save and close and what that should do is in outlook We'll go through and momentarily that'll sync through to my to my record it may take just a moment to to actually sync through so that's your integration that that's how it's all configured any queries ping a, a comment below um but yeah my my, my next video is probably going to be touching on canvas apps and how that can actually be used to integrate with the same table and push those integrations or those records through to outlook